The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20, where the Apostle Paul said, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. My dear friends in Christ, Oh, think about the pieces of armor that the Apostle Paul talks about here. I talked about them in yesterday's devotion, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and prayer. All of those pieces of armor, what Paul wants us to realize is that those are pieces of honor, armor that will protect us and keep us safe from the attacks of, of Satan, from the attacks of Satan, the unbelieving world, and our own sinful flesh. But one thing we want to note here is that those are the pieces of armor that kind of protect us from his attacks. But God doesn't leave us just to be battered and beaten by the attacks of Satan. Imagine if we were just being attacked and attacked and attacked all the time by Satan. You'd think that sooner or later we'd end up wearing down. Of course, God's armor does protect us, but God doesn't just leave us to be battered and beaten, like I said. He also gives us, it says here, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Could you imagine how difficult our lives really would be if Satan would just constantly be coming after us and clubbing us with his temptations and life's trials and troubles? And all we could do is just hold up that shield of faith and, and ward him off. And that's all we could do, but he's constantly attacking us. But the fact of the matter is, is that we don't have to just simply be taking a beating from the devil. What we can do is we can go after him. We can attack him with the sword of the Spirit. With the sword of the Spirit, what we can do is we can push him back and beat him down. Oh, think, for example, when, when Jesus was tempted by Satan out there in the wilderness at the beginning of his public ministry, during those 40 days at the beginning of his public ministry? Well, what Jesus did is he used the sword of the Spirit. He used the word of God against Satan. And maybe it's as if Satan was coming after him and attacking him at first, but then he used that sword, and then Satan had to retreat. He had to back off. He had to end up giving up for a time. Well, when Jesus used the sword, Satan had to back off. 
when we use the sword of the Spirit, when we use the Word of God, well, Satan's going to have to back off from us as well. When we use the sword of the Spirit, we don't have to worry about falling. We can stand firm. We can fight Satan off. But of course, for us to use the sword of the Spirit, we need to know the Word of God. We need to know what it says so that we can use it against Satan's attack. We need to read and study that Bible faithfully, hopefully every day in our homes. And we need that word of God regularly and faithfully in our lives, in our worship, in our church. We just need that regularly in our lives. And, well, think of all of the things that probably over the years you've maybe forgotten. Things that you learned in school and now Maybe you're a few years away from school. Maybe you're a lot of years away from school. And think about the things that you've forgotten because, well, you studied them years ago and you haven't heard them again. Well, we can easily lose things from school. You can even lose things over a summer vacation, right? That's what the younger kids would say. That's why you kind of have to start over a little bit at the, in the fall of the year. But the fact of the matter is, is that we could do the same thing spiritually with the Word of God. And what's so tragic about that is that by not regularly and faithfully being in the Word, being in it every day, what can happen is we can lose that sort of the Spirit and become more and more vulnerable to the attacks of Satan and sin. Every believer is engaged in spiritual warfare against Satan, the unbelieving world, and our own sinful flesh. But thankfully, we do have this sword of the Spirit. And with the sword of the Spirit and with the full armor of God, the fact of the matter is, is that we can face that battle confidently. We can face it confidently and know that we're not going to lose because we have the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God and the full armor of God. A story from the Korean War maybe illustrates the confidence that we can have. The, and, and as, enemy of forces, and as enemy forces advanced, what happened is that the Baker Company was separated from its regiment and, and the headquarters thought maybe that they were lost. There was a period of hours where they lost communication and after quite a long time, finally a faint signal was heard from the Baker Company and, and when headquarters heard that, well, a soldier at headquarters said intently, asked intently, Baker Company, do you read me? What is your situation? This is Baker Company, came the reply. The enemy is to the east of us. The enemy is to the west of us. The enemy is to the north of us. The enemy is to the south of us. And then after a brief pause, Baker's company sergeant exclaimed with determination, and we're not going to let them escape this time. And now see, Satan's all around us. He's to the north of us, to the south of us, to the east of us, to the west of us. But you know something? We have the sword of the Spirit. We have the sword of the Spirit. We have the Word of God. We have the full armor of God. And what does that mean? That means that we can have the same kind of confidence that, that the Baker Company had. We're not going to let Satan escape from us. We're going to knock him down, huh? That's what we believers can say. With the sword of the Spirit, we cannot be beaten. Well, do we have the full armor of God? I pray that we do. However, what Satan likes to do is he likes to convince us that that armor of God is, is burdensome, 
that we'd be better off without it, that we don't need it. And of course, that isn't true. That isn't true. We can't get along without the armor, the full armor of God, because we know that, well, we know about the devil, that who is he, what is he? He is, roar, he is that roaring lion who is looking for someone to devour. He's gonna pounce on us if we ever aren't relying on that word of God. When we put our armor down, I can guarantee you that what Satan is going to do is he's going to come after us and make the most of the opportunity to try to attack us. Now that sounds scary, but may our Lord help us always to remember and to follow Paul's advice when he says, put on the full armor of God so that you may be able, after you have done everything, to stand with the Lord, with his armor, with the sword of the Spirit, with the word of God. We're ready to fight the good fight of faith, to go onward as Christian soldiers, because well, we're already winners. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us always to take seriously the threat of Satan's schemes and temptations, but help us also to know our strength in our Savior Jesus, which means we don't have to fear the devil and his schemes. Help us always to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.